no. Good morning. Okay, uh, good morning once again, brethren. Uh, it's a privilege to be in front of you to give this Sunday school's lesson. And by the way, as uh, like was Pastor said yesterday in the prayer meeting, this is one of my term papers. Okay, so I have to process it to become a presentation and lesson for today. But uh, just to give you a background uh, of, of the situation that we are in right now, uh, we live in an age where there is so much advance in research. Uh, if we look, I'm sure most of us, if not all, are into social media. And we see what's happening. We have the space exploration, especially by Elon Musk, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have the electric vehicles flying every now and then. I think in the Philippines, we also have that. Then we have the nanotechnology. The augmented reality, if you're aware of that, augmented reality is to be able to predict what's going to happen, especially in the field of agriculture. Then we have the digital farming and the AI and so much more. But just, say, I think, a week or two ago, one woman center said, puro kayo research, wala naman nangyayari. Diba? So you can just imagine the disgust of many who are in the field of research. Because we cannot deny that research is very essential. And its products have taken men to where we are right now. Kung wala sigurong research, as what uh, many people said, we would probably still be in the Stone Age. And we live in an era of back-breaking, back cutthroat pace of change and innovation. I think also last week or a couple of weeks ago, you probably saw this news that one Filipino was able to develop a micro microscope out of the lenses for a cell phone. Who can imagine that that can be done? Pag sinabi natin microscope, we can only find that in the laboratories. But now, sooner you probably have a phone where you can use the microscope. And this brings me to a person, well, I've said it's a, a product of my term paper, but probably a few of you most likely would recall. In fact, I asked a few students a while ago, sabi ko, natatanda nyo ba yung pangalan na yan? Uh, very few said yes. The first time that I encountered this person was in my grade five. And it, it only became clearer when I was in my second year in high school, when we were using the microscope more. And uh, I'm to, uh, so, by sorry, I forgot the last point. As what I've said, with so much progress and advancement brought about by the never-ending research, it cannot be denied that man has exalted himself and placed God on the back seat. Totoo yan, pag tinignan natin yung mga accomplishment ng man, especially yung binanggit to the first statement, you can hardly mention or see the name of God being mentioned. And as I've said, this person that I will be revealing to you or explaining to you in a while is Anton Van Leeuwenhoek. Contrary to uh, the misnotion, we thought that sino dito nagkakakala siya nag invent ng microscope? Probably many, but he was not the inventor. I'll explain in a while. But just an overview, uh, Leeuwenhoek was a Dutch microbiologist and microscopist in the golden age of Dutch science and technology. If any one of you, probably a Deacon Glenn has been in the Netherlands. I've been there many times during my last work. And you can just be amazed of the technology that they have, especially in, uh, in agriculture. When you go to their greenhouses, it's like you're out of this world. Sincerely. Napakagaling ng kanyang technology. And this country is just very small. But they have, they produce many great scientists. And Leeuwenhoek was one of that. And he was a largely self-taught man. Uh, he is commonly known as the father of microbiology and one of the first microscopists and microbiologists. So yun yung kanyang title. And he is best known uh, for this uh, field of microscopy and his contributions to the, toward the establishment of microbiology as a scientific discipline. Dati maliit na part lang yan ng science, but he make it really a major discipline. So, as what I've said, uh, Leeuwenhoek ay importante para malaman natin where he's coming from when he made his testimonies regarding the Lord. But to start with his childhood, uh, 
He was born uh, in October, uh, on October 24. That means kung buhay pa siya ngayon, uh, he will be celebrating his 350th year. So, pero hindi naman siya mabuhay in a month's time. No, because we're September 24. And at the age of five, ang kanyang background when he was still young is not very good. Meaning when he was only five, his father died uh, when he was at the age of five. Then nag-remere yung kanyang mother, but uh, when he was ten, namatay na naman yung kanyang stepfather. So that's a very style, sad state for Leeuwenhoek. Uh, and during that time, he attended a school in Warmond, but for only for a very short time, then went to Bentusen with his uncle. Yung kasing family niya, yung nanay niya, medyo may kaya. Uh, they, uh, she was a scion of a brewer's family, so they can afford uh, to send him to good school. Pero hindi, there was no mention how extensive his schooling was. As in the previous slide, it was mentioned he was a self-taught man. Sarili niyang aral. But after that, uh, the good thing with Lewin Hawk was he was a very, uh, uh, we can say, industrious or masipag siya. Hindi siya tamad, ano? Uh, he did not uh, uh, rely do sa kayamanan na kanyang nanay, so nagsumikap siya. And he became a bookkeeper's apprentice for six years dun sa linen draper shop sa Amsterdam. And this will be instrumental later, as I will explain. And ang may-ari nun was a nobility of uh, the Netherlands or Holland during that time. So, uh, when he was 22, he married. But 12 years after, namatay na naman yung, namatay naman yung kanyang asawa. So, namatay yung tatay at the age of five, namatay yung after five, uh, five years, namatay na naman yung tatay, stepfather, yun na mag-asawa siya, 12 years after, namatay yung kanyang asawa. And out of that uh, a marriage, they were able to produce five children, of which only one survived. Apat na anak naman ang namatay. So, can you imagine how tragic life can be? No, namatayan ka na ng bata ka, namatayan ka pa ng anak. The, the oldest that among the four that died was only two years old. So, only one was left. Uh, that was Maria. And then he remarried, but they were not able to produce children anymore. But I will tell later how that second marriage was a blessing to him. So, uh, after Anna finished his schooling, Leeuwenhoek uh, held various positions in his professional career. He became a chamberlain for the assembly of sheriffs in Delft. The position of chamberlain is a high position during that time. He is in charge of the affairs of the royalties. So, malaki sweldo niya ron. And he held that for 40 years. Wow, that's a long tenure, 40 years. If our pastor is holding the pastorate for 42 years, uh, but of course, less uh, compensation as compared to him. He was, uh, I think they were still having guilders. Guilders was the currency of the Netherlands during that time. So together with that, he became a land surveyor of the court of Holland and a wine gauger of Delft and its import and taxation. Leeuwenhoek was blessed with, with this vocation and he was compensated well. Ram Shampera, hindi siya nalugi. But it did not stop him from pursuing a business. Together with that, uh, nag-establish siya ng draper shop. Draper shop is like, uh, ano ba tawag ko? Nagbebenta ka ng mga tela. Drape, yung mga kurtina. Okay? And, this was very instrumental because, because this was the birthplace of his research for the lenses. Okay? Ang intentional lang nun, kasi gusto niya, tingnan ko nga itong mga, I would like to look at my thread. How does this compare with the drapes that were available during that time? He want to have the best quality so that he can, he can compete. And uh, during that time, he was also developing the lenses. So imagine, yung background niya, hindi naman siya scientist, which he will say later, yet he was able to do something about that. And that drape shop was very in instrumental in the journey of Leeuwenhoek. So, uh, he died at the very ripe age of 91. Well, if you reach 91, eh, masayang-masaya ka na siguro niya, no? Uh, in his hometown of Delft. 
I had the opportunity to visit this uh, city when I was visiting Netherlands. Pero have I known, have I recalled this name, I could have visited this home place. Pero hindi ko alam eh, kaya hindi ko na visita. Maliit lang yan, it's in the western part of the Netherlands. So this is the short uh, background of uh, Levinok from the childhood until his death. Now we go deeper dun sa kanyang research, you know. He is considered the father of microscopy. As what I've said earlier, contrary to the misnotion of many that he was the, the inventor of a uh, microscope, no, he was not. The inventor is the Janssen father and son, Hans and Zacharias, who were spectacle makers in Tagagawa ng Salamin. In the year 1590, uh, they started making the microscope, but it was Leeuwenhoek who advanced the microscope. Tignan niyo yung, ano, look at the type of microscope that he developed. This is the, one of the original surviving microscopes that he had. Kung titignan niyo, mukha cell phone. Di ba? Stone Age cell phone. So, if you look at the, the, the first, the cover page that I showed, those are the kind of microscope that we see right now. But this type of microscope, one of the best assets of uh, Leeuwenhoek was he had this gift how to polish the lenses. It was uh, an intrinsic gift to him, a gift to him by God, which he used. Unfortunately, he never shared it to the many. Mamaya, makikita niya. So, yan ang nangyari. So, when he developed the microscope, he started looking at things. By the way, Leeuwenhoek is fascinated with nature. Uh, paglabas siya, he wants to see the birds, he wants to see the fishes, he wants to see the animals. And it really took his attention. That's why when he was developing the microscope, he uh, started to see, oh, there are much more than what I see. That's why uh, he started bacteriology, protozoology, and advanced parasiti parasitology, which we are enjoying right now. And this led to the accurate description of many human cells, including RBC, white blood cells, human tissues. For those who are aging like me, familiar na tayo sa mga RBC, WBC, di ba? Uh, kasi pag blood chem ka, isa sa mga tinitingnan niyan. If you have abnormal figures, then kakabahan ka. Di ba? So, let's owe it to him because he started researching on this. Imagine a very crude microscope. He was able to see it. And not just in humans. Because of his fascination in, new, in nature, he started with humans and then went down to the animals. Okay? And to the fishes. So, by 16, 1673, Leeuwenhoek was discovering things with superior microscopes that, as what I've said, that no human eye had ever seen. And also, during that year, he began corresponding with the Royal Society of London, which was newly established during that time. The Royal Society of London was established for the purpose of collating, uh, for the pers uh, output of researches for the pursuit of the betterment of the, especially the human health. So, nagsimula siyang makipag-correspond na do sa Roman, as ah, sa Royal Society of London. He turned the microorganisms, which we are using right now, as animal cules. Eh, siguro wala na gumagamit niyan ngayon. Ano? Animal cules. Siguro parang derivation of molecules. Right? And this is, just to give you a picture of that, that's how he drew what he saw in under the microscope. So imagine, napakagaling yung tao, no? eh, nagtitinda, lang ng, eh, nagtitinda lang ng mga damit, and now being able to develop a microscope and seeing these animalcules or microorganisms to be modern. And uh, ito, nabanggit ko na, no, by 1675, yung erythrocytes. Again, alam to na nagpapablood chem. Ano? Erythrocytes contain the hemoglobin. In, uh, the red pigment in our blood is very important because it brings the oxygen to all cells in our body. Pag may problema ka sa erythrocytes, kabahan ka na. Okay, lalo na kung way off dun sa, kumalayo ka dun sa normal level. So, he discovered that. Imagine, you know, a draper being able to discover yung erythrocytes. And of course, he was able to uh, first observe the, smart, uh, the sperm of humans, dogs, and so much more. So, in 1683, he also saw the bacteria in our, you know, in our dental tartar. 
And uh, of course, the bacteria in parasitic protozoa in sadumi. So imagine how inquisitive this person is. Mamaya makikita niyo sa testimony niya, ang galing. So with all these things, uh, you can just imagine how vast, how great this person was. He was really gifted. No? And as what I've said, by the year 1673, he was already corresponding with the Royal Society of London. And uh, this happened because he had a friend. Leeuwenhoek, though he was not mentioned as a recluse, or hindi naman siya namumuhay na talagang hiwalay, pero medyo suklado siya. Hindi siya basta-basta nakikipag-associate. But it, it was only by his association with his uh, physician friend, Rainier de Graaf, na i-endorse siya dun sa uh, Royal Society. I term it RSL para hindi mahaba yung salita. Okay? Uh, if I say RSL, Royal Society of London yan, or RS. And during that time, uh, in-introduce siya para may publish yung resulta ng kanyang works. Una ayaw ni, ano eh, ni Lewin Hoke, pero it was because of the prodding of his friend. Padala natin yan sa Royal Society para makita nila. Uh, yeah, that's what I've said. Sabi nga niya, why? Dahil ako ay isang negosyante lamang. No? Diba, sabi nga kanina, he is a self-taught man. He did not study science or microbiology. Um, yeah, he was not scientific. He was neither artist, artistic or he was not fond of writing anything. So, kaya na doon yung reluctance niya to join the Royal Society. But because of the uh, support of his friend, he was able to do so. But the, despite, despite the success of uh, Leeuwenhoek, doon sa relationship niya, doon sa Royal Society, ay nagkaroon sila ng sa relationship. Why? Because the Royal Society started to doubt his credibility. Uh, especially nung pinapadala niya na yung mga observations niya ng microscopic single-celled organisms. Because during that time, single-celled single -cell organism ay bago yan. Kukun ni pa may alam niyan at sinachallenge siya na marami. So nagtataka sila, uh, parang mahirap ata yan, parang walang katotohanan yan. No? Tapos, so they really challenge the reputation of uh, Lee Winhock as a reliable observer. But it goes without saying that when his, uh, what prodded also his friend, uh, Rainier de Graaf, to convince the Royal Society, kasi may na nagpadala na ng same observations, but what he said, you should look at this, this is much, much more. So talagang, siyempre, yung Royal Society, bago lang si Lewin Nook, normally may mga manok na yan, may mga kilala na yan, so nagka-doubt sila. But later on, because now, dito naging interesado na si Leeuwenhoek. He was no longer selfish uh, not to share of his findings. So, he continued to insist the Royal Society, just take a look at what I have found. So, what happened was that the Royal Society had to talk to a group of Christians. I won't mention anymore. It's a mouthful. You can read it. You know? But if you read there in the slide, uh, I just will just mention Alexander Petri, minister to the English Reformed Church in Delft. Benedict Hahn, at the time of Lutheran, minister at Delft. Henry Cords, then, then Lutheran minister at The Hague, accompanied by Sir Robert Gordon and four others. So, if we look at the background of these people, they are all Christians. So why? Probably, it was, though it was not mentioned uh, how deep Leeuwenhoek uh, was, uh, was in his Christian convictions, but if you look at this, ay yung mga Christians ang ginamit nila para makipag-usap sa kanya. Okay? So, in short, after talking to Lewin Hock for all his uh, 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 discoveries, finally in 1677, yung observations niya were fully acknowledged by the Royal Society. So it, uh, it took some time, you know? Marami na siyang discoveries, but there were hurdles. And dito makikita natin that even believers you know, are still useful. We are look at this. These are Christians. There was no mention that they were great theologians. They were ministers, of course. The assumption is they were preaching the word, but they were used by the Lord to talk to their fellow Christian in the person of Levin Hawk to be able to use his discoveries. And three years after, by the year 1680, I nominate Nasi Levin Hawk 
uh, to be given high, uh, to, to be a member of the Royal Society. Hindi pa siya member nun eh. Tinatanggap lang nila yung letter niya. No? So when he became a member, nabigla si Lewin, no? because bago ko makapasok dun sa Royal Society of London na yan, alam naman natin, pag sa England, may pagka-aristokrata yung mga aristokrato, di ba? But he took it an honor to be a member, yet, uh, suplado as he is, he never attended the the induction, or did he, did he attend any meeting? So that's Cleveland Hope. Okay? Now, uh, ano yung mga recognition na naibigay because of uh, achievements of Cleveland Hope? In 1716, he received the medal from the University of Belgium and was honored for his genius in his own time. Reminds me yung binanggit kanina ni Deacon June, yung Duke of Belgium, ano? Eh, iba naman yun, yun ay kakakain. Ito naman ay genius na na-awardan. Okay? And uh, by 1723, he had written 190 letters to the Royal Society containing the details ng maraming field na kanyang ni-research but naka-center sa microscopy. And uh, he was also to have, to have made more than 500 microscopes. Madami yun. For you to be able 500 microscopes, of which less than 10 na lang yung natitira. Yung pinakita kong picture isa yon Nasa museum yon dun sa city of Leiden. Just uh, very near Delft. And, but, gaya na sinabi ko, he never shared his secret about his microscope. Talagang magaling siya dun sa pag-polish ng ano, nung mga lenses. But he never shared them. Another thing is, he never published any proper scientific paper. Hindi nga siya magaling magsulat eh. He did, he did wrote, he did write some papers in Latin, but they have to be translated. Or, sorry, in Dutch, but they were later translated to Latin and English. He preferred to work alone because he distrusts the sincerity of those who offer their assistance. So, medyo mahirap din yan, no? So, medyo loner talaga siya. But even with his lonesome, he was able to produce much. Now, this is one thing na major dun sa transition or dun sa development. Theory of biogenesis versus uh, spontaneous generation. Sino you know, dito mga microbio or no? Tinatanong ko kanina yung ano ko si Dara. Ate, alam mo ba yung ano yan? Hindi, deb ko mako. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, I will explain this a little bit. A little technical but not so technical because this is a jump off point dun sa mga declarations ni Levin Hope for his testimony as a faithful Christian. Ano? Uh, ito yung apologetic niya eh, uh, regarding sa spontaneous generation. It laid the groundwork for Louis Pasteur noong 1800. So patay na si Levin Hook niyan. Louis Pasteur is a French uh, chemist and microbiologist. You can, do, put that in, you can look at that in Google. He is famous for his works, his discoveries in vaccination, in uh, microbial fer fermentation, and as the name implies, pasture. Pag sinabing pasture, saan yan? Sa mga gatas. Diba? So, kaya ma may makikita kayo pasteurized milk. Because that process of uh, uh, microbial activity gave us this pasteurized milk para nainom natin sila ng safe. And here, Leeuwenhoek was trying to demonstrate the Genesis Principle that all living things reproduce faithfully and continually after their kind and confirmation of the principle that all living creatures deduce from origin, from those which were formed at the beginning. He firmly and sincerely believed in Genesis. Pinangahawa ka niya yun. Uh, was a, uh, grew up in a Dutch Reformed family. So very strong yung adherence niya sa Christian convictions niya. And during that time, kasi yung, yung, yung spontaneous generation, ang isang matinding uh, defender niyan, si Aristotle. For a thousand years, ito yung kanyang, kanilang claim dyan, that something can be generated out of nothing. Yun. So, in short, that's evolution. So, yun ang kanilang declaration. But for a thousand years, there were, there were a lot of debate that went on regarding this thing. Uh, but in the year 1688, eh, an Italian uh, naturalist and uh, physician also, in the person of Francesco Redi, 
was able to disprove spontaneous generation. He uh, now was uh, espousing or gave credence to the idea of biogenesis. So what happened was that meron siyang experiment na ginawa, yung nabubulok na karne, nakita nila, nung tinignan nila, may lumalabas yung mga flies. Ngayon, ang assertion doon, nung mga, yun, nung mga sp spontaneous generation uh, advocates, ay hindi, lumabas siya, parang evolutionary process yan. Pero si Reddy, dinisprove niya yan. Kaya lang, it did not end there. Kulang pa rin yung proof. And this is where uh, Leeuwenhoek came in. So, as what I've said, the spontaneous generation was very difficult to, to totally disprove despite the findings already. So what happened was that Leeuwenhoek, through his microscope, was able to see what was happening in that decaying matter, to see that those flies actually came from uh, the eggs of the flies. So meaning galing siya sa buhay na matter, hindi doon sa inorganic. Okay? So, Luminox findings lent great support to Reddy's evidence that spontaneous generation was not possible. Yun na yun, that was the final uh, verdict to disprove yung spontaneous generation. And uh, it, was, but it was only in 1864 because of Pasture, which I mentioned just a while ago, that gave the final proof because gumawa na sila ng maraming researches eh. So dito makikita natin how the research of Leeuwenhoek helped. Ano? Only because of his Christian convictions. Sinabi niya, eh, naniniwala ako na ito ay galing sa isang buhay na matter, hindi sa inorganic. Because I can see it in my microscopes. So very good testimony. And now, ito yung mga pronouncement ni Leeuwenhoek based on what he saw under his microscopes. His faith and convictions thinking God's thoughts after the microscope. So when he was uh, using his microscope, laging nasa isip niya, laging nasa puso niya, yung creation ng God. Ano? Yung, kaya nga sabi niya, Genesis eh. So sabi nga niya, this is from the book of Tsairbeck, uh, one of my references in my term paper. Sabi dito, Leeuwenhoek thought that microscopic organisms were greater marvels than macroscopic ones. His works are full of his admiration for the wise creator and his creation, a theme frequently found in his writings of this period. In becoming better acquainted with creation, men wanted to be near the creator, a conviction that is found among many of the members of the Royal Society. Ang gandang testimony nun, ano? Ito, just to read, ito yung ano, nakalagay sa letter ni Leeuwenhoek. So sabi niya, from all these observations, we discern most plainly the incom incomprehensible perfection, the exact order, and the inscrutable providential care with which the most wise creator and lord of the universe had formed the bodies of these animal cules, yung pengginagamit siya, yan yung microorganisms, which are, so, which are so minute as to escape our sight. To the end, the different species of them may be preserved in existence. And in most wonderful disposition of nature with regard to these animal cules for the preservation of their species, 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 which at the same time strikes us with astonishment, must surely convincing of all absurdity of those old opinions. Yan yung spontaneous generation na sinasabi ni Aristotle. And that living creatures can be produced from corruption of putrefaction. So simply said, what Leeuwenhoek was saying here is mas maraming buhay, mas maraming uh, makikita dun sa maliit na hindi tayo nakikita ngayon. Hindi lang yung sa macroscopy, sabi nga, di ba? Just ano, uh, the thought that microscopic organisms were greater marvels than the macroscopic ones. Tayo mga tao, yung nakikita lang natin, of course, masaya na tayo. But Leeuwenhoek was investigating much, much farther. And because of this disposition and his conviction, sabi nga dito, men were being drawn to him, yung member ng Royal Society. They now become fascinated with Leeuwenhoek. So what this shows is a strong testimony of a faithful adherence 
to the teaching of the scriptures, ito yung sa, uh, Genesis account, provides a good venue of attraction even to the learned ones. Diba doon sa in, uh, introduction natin, sa so sobrang galing na ng mga tao ngayon, they put God at the back seat, but Leeuwenhoek was never like that. As he continued to discover more and more the minor creations of God, yun yung kanyang ano, testimony na challenge ngayon yung mga kasama niya sa Royal Society. And it draws their attention. Sabi nga, they wanted to be near the Creator. A very good testimony, no? So, it's a challenge to us also. And there's much more. Two more quotations that I would like to read. Kanina, thinking God after the microscope, ito naman, thinking God's thoughts after Him microscopically. Microscopically. Okay, sorry, it's a tongue twister. Also from another author, ito yung sabi niya, uh, in his book, uh, Living Hope, containing his micros- microscopical discoveries in you know, many of the works of nature. Sabi nga dito, When we duly consider this most perfect workmanship of the divine artist, we must confess that those things which we discover by microscopes and industry are but as the shadow of those it her to remain concealed from us. Not only in such small animals as this under consider as this now under consideration, but also in larger animals and in plants. It is to be hoped then that the inquirers into nature's work by searching deeper and deeper into our hidden ministry, mysteries will more and more place the discoveries of the truth before eyes of all, for us to produce aversion to the errors of former times which all those who love the truth ought diligently to aim at. For we cannot in any better manner glorify the Lord and Creator of the universe than that. In all things, how small forever they appear to our naked eyes, which yet have received the gift of life and power, if increased, we contemplate the display of His omniscience and perfection with utmost admiration. Such a statement by a great scientist. So, sinasabi niya rito, ay, mag-marvel tayo, mamangha tayo. Kasi, sa liit na yan, ang dami pa nangyayari. No? And yan ay nagmula lamang sa isang matalinong Diyos, sa great creator na nag-design. No? So, so, ito nga, so, in all his discoveries, how big they are in terms of the vastness that he achieved, yeah, uh, no, uh, though it was not mentioned that this was, this was the verse that uh, he used, but it just shows how he acknowledges the Lord. Sabi nga sa Psalms 104, O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Kung binasa kung ako, very familiar ako sa verse ito because it speaks in support of the creation account. Makita natin yan kung paano sinalansa ng Lord yung kanyang creation. And the point here is, uh, this is from our uh, Christian apologetics class, point, science is the process of thinking God's thought after Him. As many would try to deny that, diba? sabi ko nga karina in the opening statement, man, because of his achievement in technology, in innovation, in science, nakakalimutin na Diyos. But science always play behind the back of the Lord. Meaning, second rate lang yan. It can never cover the vastness of God, especially in His creation. It will only be second-rated. It will think only after God's creation. Yan yung sinabi ni Johannes Kepler uh, dun sa, based dun sa uh, aming ano, teach, uh, lesson. And this is my second to the last slide. I still have time pa naman. It, based on these pronouncements of uh, Leeuwenhoek, Imagine, ha? you're talking to the, to the learned. No, napakatatalino ng mga tao noon. Sabi ko nga kanina, they are member of the Royal Society of Law. Before you are able to join that prestigious society, siguro kailangan may degree ka. Kailangan PhD ka, or you are able to achieve something. But he never hesitated to say his testimony. As I mentioned a while ago, Leeuwenhoek grew in a Dutch Reformed tradition which had a high view of the scripture and salvation in the Lord Jesus, which is especially the firm doctrine of creation. 
He was baptized in the Calvinist uh, church. And as I mentioned a while ago, his second wife, while they never had any children, was a Calvinist. So nakatulong din yan. Ano? By God's providence, he gave, uh, despite the tragedies that befell Lewin Hawk, namatay yung mga anak, namatay yung, mga ta- yung tatay, pero binigyan ng asawa, hindi pa rin nakanak, but she was a Calvinist. And we can only assume that he helped in strengthening uh, Lewin Hawk's uh, faith. Many who read Lewin Hawk's work remarked that his character was true and his true work for the right reasons, to find, glo- <clears throat> to find glory in God's creation. He was not ashamed to give, give, to, to give glory to God in all his discoveries as evident in his letters to the Royal Society of London. And ito yung sinabi ng isa pang author, si Dobell, in 1932. He referred to them, your letters ni Leeuwenhoek, as epistles because Leeuwenhoek offers the first to the divine artist, creator, maker, sustainer, lord of the universe, and truth. Leeuwenhoek's writings are among the clearest in the history of microbiology that God made all these tiny creations as a masterpiece in his work. So very clear in all the letters, in many of the letters, maybe not all, you know, of Living Hope, he was always giving the reference to God. He, all, he was always acknowledging that he was the source and is the source of everything. Dun yung sa Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, diba? dun sa, dun sa 6 especially, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And he was a very good example, a very good testimony. And uh, with that, uh, we can see that a Christian's testimony sincerely acknowledges and points all to God in whatever breakthroughs and accolades. He, uh, sorry, I didn't edit no. He is in. I didn't take the B. And as what I've said earlier, very rare that you can hear that either in the field of research, in any accomplishment, in sports, very, very rare that you will find a person really acknowledging God's presence. But let us marvel in this very great scientist. Uh, in, in the simplicity of his life, maybe not very simple, but in all the discoveries, uh, he made sure that he will never give the credit to the loan provider. And I presume, and if I may draw an analogy on that, remember, he was going after God's thoughts microscopically. So, a lesson, an analogical lesson that we can learn is, as we immerse in the scripture, we can discover more. Those hidden gems, those hidden riches uh, in the scriptures. And my last point would be, let us marvel at the beauty and intricacies of God's creation in your daily immersion with His Word and experience the richness of His grace in your pursuit of more discoveries. We will be researching more, we will be discovering more, but, in the, uh, but we should be at, uh, at the back behind in our search for more truths and gems in the richness of God's Word. So, may uh, Anton Van Leeuwenhoek be a good example in our journey as we try to discover more things. Actually, <clears throat> Questions? I hope I did not bore you, no? <laughs> Pero, sabi ko nga, I, I, the last time I heard Leeuwenhoek was when I was, I think, in high school. But when I started to research on his life, very inspiring. What are you Christian? Eh, ano, Ian, meron ka nga. <laughs> Any question? And this is a challenge, brethren, ano? How in your vocation can you really glorify God? As, as what I've told, di ba? As you, I think most of you, if not all, are in the sock med. All is about me, 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 I, I, I. Very, very rare that you will find uh, someone acknowledging that it's God all behind this. And this, we're talking about a great scientist. No? 
He wouldn't know that we are still talking about him at this time, 350 years ago. Of course, kahit sabihin nyo naman, ano, hindi nyo na rin malalaman yan, if, you are, if we are all in glory. Ah, yes po. Akil, hinaunan po ha, mahina ang pandinig ko eh. <laughs> ano lang po. Pakilapit niyo po yung mic para po maninap. Meron kasing dalawang word na yung research at saka discovery. Mm-hmm. How are they related? Marami pa akong <laughs> Okay. Ang question niyo po is how research is related to discovery. Research is what, research can be the, what they call, the verb and noun form. Di po ba? When you do research, meaning you, you dig, you deeper, you explore. And the product of that is discovery. Di po ba? So yun na nangyari kay, kay Lewin Hawke. In fact, it was not his plan. But by the providence of God, imagine yung kanyang linya, yung kanyang vocation, Chamberlain, wine gauger, blah, blah. So, but he had, but he had a drape shop, and gusto lang niyang pagandahin yung quality, but he was gifted by the Lord in terms of making those lenses. And in the process of doing so, yung nakita niya, uy, meron palang mga animal kills, sa his term. You know? Oh, there must, there is much more than this thread. Eh, with him, uh, naturally inclined to nature, yung mga hayop, uh, if you read his life, then it made him more interested to research, search for more. So that's what you call research. You search, then you do it again, because it doesn't end at one step, then you research. And then the, process, the output of that is you get, you develop, you get the discoveries. I hope that's a good for your question. O oh, si Glenn, uh, we have a scientist here, you can also answer. Hindi naman, medyo nagka, nagkakapareho yun, but you could even discover, then you research on that discovery. Nakita mo ba to? You research, I gold pala siya. So, pwede din yun. You research of discovery, you may discover something, then you do research on that. Or you're, based on your research, discover, uh, you, you research, then you you made a discovery kagaya ng ginawa ni Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek. Nakadiscover siya na yung mga, may, may, mga single cell organism pala. Pero may mga discovery, nakadiscover ka ng... I-discover kasi you uncover ang discover eh. Discover is discover. You uncover something. So, ganun yon. But research is very important to put more, sabi ni I, to put more idea ano ba yung na-discover mo, to, to study it more. And uh, of course, parang sinasabi ngayon, you, you could say now, puro kayo research. Which is my thing doon, how would you apply it to, to, the, to the next generation? So yeah. research is very important. Kagaya nung ginawa ni Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek, parang walang application, pero yung iba nakakita ng application. Kaya oh. huwag din nating sabihin na yung mga basic research is very important because yes, those are oh. the foundation. Yeah. Research is very important to create, to invent something, to discover something, and innovation will come if you will apply it to, to the industry. And impact will come when it's already benefiting the consumer or the society. Thank you, Deacon Glenn. Kaya po, kaya po siya na itanong. Kasi merong sinabi rin sa Biblia, ang sabi ay, uh, lahat ng nakita ninyo, ay nandiyan na. God mm. created them. All you have to do is just research and discover them. Mm. Tapos, isa pang sinabi sa Biblia, uh, God appoints someone to sow the seeds. Another to water the seeds. Mm. And another to Cultivate the soil, perhaps, mm. but it is God who made the plant grow. Mm. Isa pa sa na talagang na-amaze ako, yung mga puno. Kasi sinabi rin sa Biblia, He created everything in each kind. Mm-hmm. Kaya pag tinignan ko yung malunggay, but itong malunggay hindi nagbubunga ng papaya. Bakit hindi... And yet, in man's research, nakikita natin yung minimix 
ng mga tao yung kanilang kaalaman upang mag-produce ng donkey which cannot produce himself unless you really make hindi ko alam nakalimutan ko na kung ano ang kung ano yung dalawang hayop na pinagsama to produce a donkey pagkatapos yung grafting yung grafting parang eto it has something to do with 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 ano with agriculture na nagpo-produce tayo ng parang yung apple plus ano kaya ang lasa ay apple at ganito kasi they they did the grafting minix nila yung dalawang puno na magkaiba para magkaroon ng isa may mga ganyan ng ano eh may mga ganyan ng ginawa dahil sa research kaya ang research kung hindi babantayan maglilid sa wrong discovery sa akin ganun ang aking palagay okay thank you po uh, tita te tama naman po yan gaya nga po na sinabi ko kanina uh, we can really marvel at the immensity of God's creation di ba kaya nga po yung science will always play second fiddle unfortunately many are putting science above God but Come to think of it, why even science is doing all this research? Because they have never exhausted everything, all the creations of God. Dipo ba? So we can only help but marvel na grabe yung creation ng God. And like the testimony of Lewin Hawk, sabi nga niya, mas namamangha ako sa nakikita ko dun sa mga hindi nakikita ng mata. Di ba? Microscopically. Diba? Sabi niya, grabe ang activity rito. Totoo naman po yan. If you look at the microscope, the paramecium, the amoeba, you will see how they move, but you will never see them in your ordinary life. Po ba? So, salamat po doon sa sinabi niyo kanina. Totoo naman po, one sows the seed, another waters, but ultimately, ang Panginoon ang magpapala po. Sinabi din nga po yan nila Apostol Pablo eh, nung sa pagmiministry nila. Okay. Thank you, Pa. Yes, Sister Carol. Share ko lang po, ano. Uh, indeed, when we look everywhere at God's creation, we really can't help but marvel. Pero yung isang, I mean, looking at what we have every day, yung body latin, what's inside it, we really can't help but marvel at God's amazing creation. So, Nung na, na heart attack si Jun nun, so I was allowed to watch the angioplasty, I really can't uh, help but be in awe kung gan galing ang God. Na every beat it, every cell, every vein is there for a purpose. And then recently, I'm studying on fasting. Mas lalo ako ulit na amazed kasi... Uh, we have, uh, alam mo yun, kahit mag-fasting tayo for 40 days, we have a store of multivitamins that we will need. We have a stored fat that mm. we will still be able to survive. So, uh, I just want to quote yung sa Psalm 139, uh, verses 13 to 14. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. For I praise you, for I am fearfully and uh, wonderful are your works my soul knows it we very well so eto pa no sabi niya my frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret mm -hmm. so imagine alam na alam ng God the exact time that a cell and an egg cell will meet uh, as an egg cell and a sperm cell will meet to form us mm -hmm. so ganun na lang ka amazing yung God, as our creator, didn't leave his creation on its own, but he is the one sustaining it. And every bit of it, may God really is a God of order, and yeah, everything yeah. can be sustained because God sustains it. So really, I praise and thank God for it. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Carol. That's true. You know, imagine if we look at the complexity of the world. Yeah, the, the, the egg and sperm cell, 
it's even hidden from our eyes, di ba? So, but look at, as, at us right now. You won't be Johnny Pempenko. No one knows that you will be Johnny Pempenko. No one knows that you will be Deacon Ike. But this is how amazing the God is, you know. He arranged everything, and Leeuwenhoek summarized that in his very good statement. Kaya, I was really amazed when I was doing my research here. Uh, reading it, sa ko, ibang class rin. Ibang tao nito. And imagine, kung matalino na siya, many of his contemporaries would not even acknowledge God, or they would deny it. But he was very firm. Thank you, Sister Carol. Yes, uh, Ati Jin. Huwag mo hihirapan mo question eh. Oh, ha? Ano-ano? Huwag mo hihirapan pa question. Hindi nga question. <laughs> not a question. I've known him since uh, elementary grade. Yeah. Uh, same like you. Grade 5 ako. Uh, grade 5. But um, what, sharing lang, not a question on the marvel of God's creation. But I'm not a physical nor a natural scientist, um, social scientist. So... Uh, be, uh, beyond the creation is the process of creating. So, uh, especially yung field ko is communication or science. So, uh, uh, marvel din sa akin yung the way God created the universe with the power of His Word. And actually, that was the foundation of my dissertation. Mm -hmm. And God said, let there be light. And there was light because I was... Uh, educated um, by <laughs> in the university that communication is transmission of information. So it's very passive. Well, uh, parang the question ako, knowing that the world was created by uh, the power of God's word and God said and let there be light and there was light. And that became the impetus for my theoretical pursuit. Uh, the theological foundation has become the impetus for my theoretical pursuit since then. Uh, I'm not like him nor you here. I disdain society, <laughs> sorry. Uh, though I am a member of the International Communication Association. Um, uh, but yung marvel that this knowledge is available is uh, read at the word of god yung hindi mo hindi lang siya yung natu yung marvel uh, uh, amazing creation but the process itself and god said mm -hmm. let there be light and there was light and so oh dun nasagot yung tanong ko um Paano nangyari na ang communication and transmission of information lines? So, so, so mechanical for me. So, but, but being a Christian, hindi ganun ang communication. It's a creative principle. Mm -hmm. And so that's how uh, I enjoy research. <laughs> I would, yung sabi ng former dean namin, um, um, alam ni, siguro ni Dara to. Uh, I eat <laughs> research and theory for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> because the because you do it marveling at what yeah, uh, and who God is yeah. and His uh, power. Yeah, yeah. That's why I quote. Thank you, Ati Gina. No, that's why I quoted you Psalm 104 earlier. Kung babasahin natin yon, nakasalansan eh. Of course, it's a Genesis and creation account. Then the Psalter, Psalmist. Uh, mention it again in that psalm, sunod sunod, and sabi nga dun sa no, I was uh, navigating in myself when while you were talking, sabi nga sa verse 24 ng Psalms 104, O Lord, how manifold are your works, in wisdom you have made them all. As you were mentioning a while ago, how does communication, uh, blah blah blah, na, no? but by the providence of God, imagine, when he created the universe, which us is part of that, all the raw materials are there for man to make use of. Tayo na nagpa-process, even communications develop. That's why this type of communication that we're having right now is so splendid. Dati nga, yung telepono pa lang eh. Di ba yung telegrama? Masaya ka na pag nakapagdala ka ng ano ngayon. Ngayon, kahit nandito ka, mag-send ka ng communication, siguro sa Greenland or whatever, 
Para tingin na kagad, yun ang instant. Pag inisip mo yun, paano kaya yun? Yun, tumatravel sa ere or what? You just marvel at the greatness of the Lord. He allowed such things to happen. He made such things to happen. Yeah. Sige, sige, sige. <laughs> okay lang, para magising yung mga inaantok. Pwede ako mag-joke. Uh, Kasi tayo kunting oras. There was this uh, one time, Sunday school din natin, and after that, uh, may bantering kami dyan sa labas. I think si Pastor, or may, and maybe Glenn and myself. Sabi ni, ni uh, someone said, I don't know whether it was Glenn na, ang 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 naunang science daw is agriculture parang ganyan sabi ni pastor no it's um yung sa ano daw pastoral yung parang uh, pastoral before agriculture ah sabi ko sa kanila and god said let there be light and there was light it was communication ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hindi ako deb pero wrong term Electricity <laughs> or sound waves. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ate Gina. Thank you. Just to lighten up that. Any, uh, yes, uh, Esther. Um, ano, nung college ako, may pinabasa sa aming article yung prof namin. Um, ecology pala yung, ano, yung prof, yung subject na yun. Uh, may pinabasa siyang Nat Geo article na tungkol sa yung uh, unique and specific um, adaptations ng carnivorous plants. So, yung, kasi we're talking about ano, being marveled at creation. So, yung article na yun, um, yung author, um, every time, uh, sobrang ano, gandang-ganda siya dun sa yung, ano, yung unique adaptations ng carnivorous plants. Sobrang amazed siya. Pero, evolutionist siya. So, ano, every time na may i-describe siya, sobrang amazed na amazed siya. Sabi, yung evolution, i-attribute niya sa evolution, and then ipapersonify niya si evolution. So, tawa ko ng tawa when I was reading the article, but it's not a joke. It's a, it's a required reading in our subject. Mm. And even yung, yung last, ano, yung last line pa nung article ay, sabi niya, he delights in the inventiveness of evolution. <laughs> Di ba ang ironic? <laughs> Kasi... Kung ginawa nila niyang God, yung every evolution word done, he would have been correct. So nakakatawa po kasi iba yung na-amaze ako na yung iba yung kapag Christian yung perspective and looking at this at ano at the the beautiful intricacy of creation. Ayun. So um nakakatawa po yung art yung kay Leven, yung Leven Hope na ano na story kasi yun nga inaral namin to then in biology. Um, pero never na highlight yung Christian background niya. Nagjoke nga si <laughs> nag-message sa akin si Ian, sabi niya, Microbio 11 pala to, <laughs> hindi Sunday school. <laughs> Ayun kasi para kaming nag-review ng micro. Ayun po. So um yun, at the same time din nakakalungkot nga po na in our secular uh, subjects ini-encourage pa nila yung yung ano articles like this na pushing for evolution when ang ito nga dapat nga ganito yung ano yung tamang thrust so parang ayun ironic din kasi um the same ano parang the same discoveries uh, pwede sanang gawing ano christian yung ano yung lens pero ano parang parang sinesensor siya pagdating sa ano sa secular teachings thank you very much Esther for that uh, sharing that testimony yeah, we, we Christians would really be challenged so hard. Uh, I, I feel it also, pastor has preached it many times in the pulpit. And this is where we are being really called to draw the line. Truly, there will be time that you will have to take a decision, critical decision. But uh, the, the, the question is, whom would you, would you follow? And we saw... Of course, not everyone has the life path of uh, living hawk. But the thing is, let's look toward that goal which was promised to us. I'm studying scatology right now. Pag Lord willing, my share in the future. No, pero pag, when you have a better understanding of the things to come, the more come a marvel and the more confidence that you would have. But the grace of God is already there. So yun ang natin. And uh, also having. Uh, also, a reminder dun sa mga evolutionists, let us not be contentious with them. 
Pakinggan natin. Let us hear what they're saying, but let us also be prepared. Uh, in fact, I was, my, my original plan was to share B.B. Warfield here. And one of his uh, apologetics was regarding evolution. But I have to read it more, medyo malalim eh. Okay, baka hindi ko kaya nang sagutin yung mga tanong. <laughs> so sabi ko, pag-aaralan ka muna mabuto to. But B.B. Warfield was a very good apologist. No, he, he answered uh, the issue of evolution and creation. It's very good. I, I encourage you to read that, to, to be prepared when it comes to this uh, discussion of evolution. You can have a very good answer. Yeah. Yes, Tish. Hi, Tito Ike. Um, forwarded thought or testimony po from uh, someone online. Ang sabi niya po, I thank you, Deacon Ike, for this lesson. Indeed, it is a blessing to hear of such a scientist who is bent on magnifying God, not just through, but in his work. May he be an example for not just the scientists in our midst, but for all of us who always declare God at every opportunity we are given, wherever we are, and give him credit for all he allows us to learn and all that he's doing through us. Uh, thank you, Tish, and also for, for the brother who gave that testimony. That teaching has been mentioned in this pulpit every now and then. So I hope it has already truly sink in to us. It's not easy, to be honest. It's not easy because there will always be the trade-off. As the Bible says, uh, the world would hate us if we stand for him. So, hindi naman sinabing talikuran natin yung mundo by way of mag tayo sa mga trabaho natin. But when pushed in that situation that the name of the Lord will be compromised, make a firm stand. Acknowledge Him, always. Pero last two questions, kung meron pa. Ana? Ah, yes, Brother Ferdy. Uh, thank you sa history, uh, Degonaik. Uh, siguro ang nakakamangha lang din sa gantong mga scientist ay yung, yung research nila ay talagang hindi natatapos doon sa research itself, anuman yon. kundi talagang tinitingnan to, nila to, uh, ang pinakadulo nito ay uh, tinitingnan nila in the light of the Word of God, in the light of the Scriptures. Kasi yun niya, like yung sinabi ni Esther parang in relation doon, ay may kilala din akong uh, biologist na ang medyo mabigat ay mas na-amaze siya doon sa pagtuturo ng kanyang prop uh, na sa sobra, naniniwala sa doon sa power ng God pero sumala doon sa liwanag ng salita ng Diyos na from ape ay pwede yung gawing uh, to, from ape to man so na una over ano so ibig sabihin lang talagang so uh, na nakakatuwa lang na magagaling tong mga taong to pero uh, tiningnan pa rin nila uh, sa huli sa liwanag ng salita ng Diyos at sa tingin ko uh, ganoon ang napakagandang attitude especially kung tayo ay uh, mga Christian sa no yun lang thank you thank you brother Ferdy yeah god purpose all of these things to happen you know uh, kaya nga sinabi ko kanina who would Leeuwenhoek ever thought na makikinabang tayo sa output ng kanyang research? No. Di ba? Para yung kay Job. <laughs> would, he be, would, he, would he have known that he would be a good testimony to all believers for his uh, perseverance in trial? No. But God, by His rich providence and His grace, allowed these kind of things to happen for us to benefit. So that's why, maganda yung sinabi mo, in every, kaya nga in everything that we do, we do it for the glory of God. Because he will make use of that uh, in his purpose, in his divine purpose, for his good in such time that he deems it necessary. Kaya huwag tayong magsawa na gawin yung nararapat base sa biyaya at gabay ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Thank you, bro. Sana? Okay. Okay, if none, let us close in prayer. Aming dakilang Diyos, muli po nagpapasalamat kami sa tanghalig nito, sa pagkakataon na ibinigay niyo sa amin upang 
matalakay ang patotoo ng isang inyong nilikha, isang tapat na scientist sa katauhan ni Lee Winhock, kung paano sa gitna ng kanyang katanyagan at mga narating ay hindi siya nagkulang na maging magandang patotoo sa inyong kadakilaan ng inyong mga nilikha. Salamat Panginoon sa maganda niyang mga sulat na tunay nga ay maging hamon sa aming lahat na dito sa mundong ito. We have our own respective vocations as students, as professionals, as homemakers, and everything, Panginoon. Nawa ang mga ito ay tunay na gawin namin ayon sa kabutihan at kayaman ng inyong biyaya na bunga ng aming malalim at uh, patuloy na uh, pananaliksik at pag-meditate uh, ng inyong salita upang maging gabay namin sa aming mga lakad. And allow us to be good testimonies of Lord. Uh, of your grace, that we will never cower in fear, even face with the great challenge of the world, which is so strong. Yet, we can never do it, but only by the aid of your Holy Spirit. And may it be truthful to us, O Lord, as testimonies of your goodness and your Lordship in our lives. Thank you once again, O Father, and uh, please prepare us also for this afternoon's worship, and may you be glorified in our midst and in our worship. Praise you and we give back all to you in the glory and prayer. Yes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>